extra minutes right now. And while I can think of a million things that I should be doing with my time, instead, I wanna be here with you good people. Saying what's up, answering any questions that might be out there, seeing what you guys are up to on this fine Monday. And yeah, I am, uh, by the way, I'll be answering questions. So you can submit formally questions. So make sure that you do that uh, so that I can get to them. So the first one, how to practice self-love. Okay, so here's the tricky part about self-respect and self-love is that you actually have to earn it. So the only way, and trust me, if you could just tell yourself to love yourself and it would work, then that would be the advice that I would give. But unfortunately, there's this thing that I refer to as the physics of being human. Now, what I mean by that is that running in your brain are the subconscious processes that have kept us all as a species alive and there's nothing that you can do to get rid of them. And while many things you can greatly influence through context uh, and that can be leveraged to keep a, uh, to change the way that your thoughts impact your neurochemistry at the end of the day, So like, for instance, you can change what you think is worthy of respect, but you cannot change the fact that you must do things that you think are worthy of respect. That's the most succinct way to say that. So if you want to respect yourself, you must act in a way that you respect. That just is what it is. Um, So I will say that default ones, working hard to gain a set of skills that matter to you, that allow you to serve yourself and other people. And the and other people is a very big part of this. That's gonna be huge. All right, that's my answer on that one. Um, Another account, seriously, I don't know what that means. This is my only account. Uh, Did I click on the wrong button? I did. Uh, Let's see here. How to lead people, be good at shit intoxicate people with certainty and learn from your mistakes. Those are like the three just most fucking amazing things you could do. All right. Next up, uh, your average Sutton. I didn't see any of your hiring page, but are you hiring any accounting roles? We are not hiring any accounting roles. I'm very sad to report, but only because our the person who handles our finances is so fucking good. Shout out to Carlota. Carlota, you're a beast. And I am so glad to have you on this team. Uh, but we are hiring a metric shit ton of other things. So I highly encourage you guys to go check out our jobs page. So just go to impacttheory.com forward slash careers. Get it. We're hiring. Gaggles. Uh, any tips on acne? Yes. Yes. So I didn't suffer from acne, so I should say that. But I will say that from everything that I know and understand about diet, uh, avoid carbohydrates, avoid refined sugars. I should be specific. Vegetables you can eat a lot of, especially if they are green leafy. Um, But processed food, carbohydrates, avoid those. And I have a very strong feeling that your acne will go away now seek professional advice and all that. But if they're going to give you chemicals to intake, I would try the diet first. I'm not saying I wouldn't do chemicals. Like if I was really getting fucked up by acne, I would try just about anything. Uh, But it is guaranteed. It's guaranteed your diet. I will just say that. Now, what specifically it ends up being in your diet that's problematic, that becomes a lot more complicated. Um, What made me me? What made me me? Uh, So first of all, this is always going to be a product of a few different things. So genetics plays a role. So you're about 50% hardwired. So I'm 50% the collision of my mother and father. So that unfortunately accounts for more than I think any of us wish were true. Not because our parents aren't amazing. Mine were fucking incredible. Um, But because I don't like that we're not blank slates. That would be a far more interesting world to me. Although there's fascinating reasons why if we were, it would actually devolve into madness. Um, but we aren't blank slates. So that's the first part. The second part is how I was raised. So just where I was raised, the time I was raised and the way my parents treated me. If Gabor Mate is correct, the first three years of your life are more important than all the rest combined. Um, so I had, I was very fortunate to have good parenting. Um, 
So that's huge. And then mindset. So your mindset is everything. The good news is that's the part that you control. And as I have said many, many, many times, but this is such a phenomenal quote. I did not come up with this, but I forget who did, but it's amazing. You cannot make a racehorse out of a pig, but you can make a really fast pig. So my life is the answer to the question, what does a really fast pig look like? It's fucking awesome. Let's see. What else do we have coming in here? I'm taking questions, y'all. Uh, how is the book coming along? I have decided that I'm not, if, if I write a book, it will be entirely with a ghostwriter and I will just give them all my video content and say, turn this into a book. Uh, because I found that every time I got a, I got a book offer of over a million dollars and I resented the time that I was having to spend on it. So I've come up with an interesting question that I think everybody should ask of themselves. I want you to imagine you're standing on stage and you're receiving a standing ovation. What do you want that standing ovation to be for? And I have been the very fortunate re recipient of standing ovations for speaking about the things that I would write in a book. And it doesn't scratch that itch in my soul of what I really want to contribute. I will keep speaking and I love it and it is amazing and may that forever be a part of my life. This isn't me saying that I don't love it. It's just me saying that the thing that I want to pour my life into and get that standing ovation for is writing stories. So film, TV, comics, um, that's my real, like when somebody says that they're impacted by something that I wrote as a like character vehicle, as a story, I don't know why, man but that shit just really gets me. Uh, so I resented working on a nonfiction book because I already spent so much time pouring my heart and soul into these videos. Um, so yeah, that's a big part of it. Here's an interesting one. This is from Ida Etak. <laughs> I take action, wow. Okay, so I'm gonna punch myself in the mouth for not realizing what that was faster. Uh, so any tips for managing multiple projects, businesses? All right, so you're now playing the most dangerous game on earth when it comes to business because focus is incredibly important. Uh, so you wanna be very, very careful not to spread your energies too thin. Um, read uh, Ryan Holiday's book, Perennial Seller. He talks a lot about um, being very careful about not bifurcating your energies too much. Now, having said that, impact theory actually has a bifurcated focus and it has helped us tremendously. So the key is to make sure that you do the lead domino strategy. Shout out to Tim Ferriss. So you pick the thing that if I did this, then it would have this very important knock on effect and that will apply to every area of your life. So make sure that when you put energy into one thing, it helps the other areas of your life. So you can do multiple projects as long as they somehow come back together and help each other. That, that is gonna be the key there. All right, what else do we have here? I'm not sure if the newest questions are at the top or the bottom here. Uh, Kevin Logan Shim says, have you actually noticed the benefit from blue light glasses? I'll say that it falls within the placebo range. So yes, I think, but I wouldn't bet my life on it. And so many things in life are like that. So I just try to stack all the things where there's at least some evidence on, um, and they certainly don't hurt. Um, how to feel, it says relive, but I'm guessing relaxed and not stressed all the time, how to stop being anxious. Okay, um, so number one, anxiety is a very different thing than stress. So stress, um, will be a frame of reference thing that's gonna break down the long, along the lines of something like, um, remember that you can always do less. Doing less is always an option. And I'm like Captain Hustle Porn, I love that shit. David Goggins grind, but I don't do overwhelm. And the reason I don't do overwhelm is because if I feel myself getting overwhelmed, I'm not afraid to stop and A, take a breath, relax, chill the fuck out. And if I'm looking at all the things in my life and it's just too much, then I will do less. The only point, the only point is joy, to love your life. So grinding, when you fucking love it, is amazing. 
grinding yourself into the dirt is fucking stupid. So we want to do things that make us feel joy. Never lose sight of that. Uh, so that's part number one. That's a stress element. Anxiety is largely, are you ready? A function of diet. You heard it here first. It is a function of diet. As much as I don't want that to be true, I'm going to guess in the next five to seven years, there will be major clinical trials that come out that show that you can massively reduce anxiety by changing your diet. So the next question, if you're paying attention is what should I change my diet to? And the answer, of course, is whole foods, uh, avoiding processed foods whenever humanly possible, a nice wide variety, um, and then trusting your body because everybody's microbiome is different and it's your microbiome communicating to your brain that causes a lot of the problems here. Uh, so making sure that you're eating in a way that works with your microbiome and then getting into the really advanced shit. Then there's like fecal, my, fecal microbial transplants. Don't run out and get one. I certainly have not. Uh, but I think that they probably are the future um, in terms of rebalancing people. Now, having said that, let's pretend for a second that your diet is on point and now you wanna take anxiety down even further. Um, but I will say that I think 80% of the anxiety in my own life was caused by diet, okay? Now there is a thought component, but if you're just addressing the thought component and you never address the diet component, you'll be like, why the fuck doesn't this work? And the reason it doesn't work is because your diet is so fucked up and your microbiome is freaking out, which then makes your brain freak out, which then you interpret to be anxiety. All right, now, the anxiety, anxiety portion is largely a frame of reference. So anxiety is basically catastrophizing about the future and then looping around it and repeating and repeating and repeating those thoughts. Now, as you do that, you get more freaked out and then your brain hardwires that emotion. It becomes easier to think. So you think it more, meaning easier calorically. Your brain is always trying to conserve calories. So whatever you repeat, it makes easy. And so then that becomes the default. So now you've got your messed up microbiome screaming to you that there's a problem. Then your brain goes, yeah, fuck, there's a problem because I'm rehearsing failure over and over and over. Now you put those two together and you've got the embers of a fire and the gas that you're pouring on the fire. And now you got a real problem. So if you get those two things right, then I think you will see your anxiety drop so dramatically uh, that it will change your life forever. So yeah, I would just start with that. All right, I'm answering your questions, everybody. Keep them coming. The real James Brown says, do you ever question whether you are giving good advice to people? Of course. So the advice that I give in my life is the things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, or I will tell you, hey, I don't use this, but here's how I'm thinking about it. And that way you can think about it on your own. Um, but all of us should be striving to not just parrot things back, but to actually own the knowledge. And the only way to own the knowledge is to use it. So on mindset stuff, for instance, to quote the brilliant 50 Cent, I came in the game humble. Can't nobody tell me shit now. Because I have used it. I took myself from floundering in my own life, uh, laying in bed four to five hours a day, every day, to getting the discipline to change my life so dramatically and profoundly that I now realize that I can do basically anything I set my mind to. Um, you have to build the skill set. It's not like you can just do it because you think about it, but you can go out and build that skill set. So I stay in my lane. I give people advice around things that I actually use and have gotten results. So from that perspective, first of all, I'm always open. God knows it. if I'm as smart as I'm ever going to be now, that makes me very sad. So I will certainly change as I get more knowledge. Um, but yeah, I give people advice that I've seen work at least once. All right. What else do we have? Ooh, ooh. I didn't mean to click on this one. Hopefully it's good. Uh, it's Groove Killer. How to stop being lost and get out of complacent funk. Okay. So here's an interesting way to think about life. Imagine this for a second. Imagine that what I call the only belief that matters is really true. The only belief that matters is if I put time and energy into getting a skill, getting good at something, I actually will get good at that. And then skills have utility. So you can get good at something that matters. So the example I always use is building a bridge because this fucking blows my mind. You can actually unite two land masses over water by learning engineering and building a fucking bridge. And then people can drive or walk over that shit. That is crazy to me. Now, 
if you don't learn that skill right, then you can't do that or people die as they try to traverse. So getting that skill allowed you to actually get better at something because that's what the human animal is designed to do is get better at that thing. And by putting time and energy into it, you actually got better and you can change the world as a result. So now if I'm in a complacent funk and I'm thinking to myself, hey, I can do anything I set my mind to. I can actually become that really fast pig in any area of my life. And that 10Xing my abilities has this extraordinary impact on my own life and the lives of other people. I can elevate other people, all that. Now, how I spend my time becomes a spiritual consideration because I can fucking do anything I want with my time. So that to me is so exciting. And now it just becomes a question of what do I want to point myself at? What do I want to go get good at? What do I want to dedicate my time and energy to? Now, this is the real thing. Make sure you point yourself at something that gives you more energy than it takes. So don't point yourself at something that sucks or that your parents tell you is cool or that the world tells you is cool. Point yourself at something that actually fucking excites you and then know that the more you work to get better at that thing, the more fucking dominant you can be. That shit excites me. So for all you that want to fucking dominate, let's talk about it. Domination is rad. Now you can elevate, you could dominate at elevating other people. You could dominate at lifting the world up. I can get behind that shit. But playing to win is fucking fun. All right. Next. Answered that one already. Here's an interesting one. Uh, this is from Marlove XXMB, putting yourself first without hurting others. So I'm going to answer this question from the perspective of mothers because I think that this really does encapsulate the issue. So uh, nature makes sure that when mothers have children that they become their everything. They would literally lay their life down for that child. And by doing that, they oftentimes, not always, but they oftentimes end up living for the child and through the child and just everything becomes about the child. And the nature pulls this really cruel trick called menopause and your kids leave and your hormones change. And all of a sudden you realize, holy fuck, I've lived my entire life for other people. And now I don't even know who I am or what I want. And to some degree, we all fall into that space. And when you realize that, oh shit, I could actually do something for myself that actually makes me more joyful, makes me more interesting to be around and makes me more capable because going back to the only belief that matters, the things that we give our time and energy to, they change us, they improve us, they make us better at that thing. So to me, to really be able to give to somebody else, you need to take care of yourself. But if I'm completely honest, I don't struggle with that. So this is my life. I'm living in this body. I have to deal with these emotions. And so I want to live a life that is joyful to me. Now, it just so happens that I know that going back to the physics of being human, that there are just certain things that are true about the human mind. One of the things that's true about the human mind is that we are a social creature. We want to contribute to the group. So doing shit that you think is rad for you, that elevates you, that is super fun, never, ever, ever, under any circumstance, waste a moment's time feeling guilty about that. But then also know that as you do things that elevate you, share that shit, uplift other people, touch their life with it. Like what else can you do? Like all the things that I have done to have these answers at my fingertips were to pull myself out of a dark place. But then I was like, shit, this actually worked. So now that I know that it works, it's like part of the joy is being able to share that with other people. But first it started with, I feel like a failure. I, my father-in-law does not want me to marry his daughter. And I actually think he's right to be worried about me. So it started purely from, I don't want to disappoint my girlfriend. I don't want my father-in-law to be right. And I want to stop thinking that I'm a loser. And so, yeah. I just realized that by investing in myself, it ended up being good for a lot of other people. So, word. All right, what else do we have? Don't forget to submit your questions. I see a lot of people putting questions by in the thing, in just the feed, but if you put them in the actual question thing, then I can pick ones like this from Morgan, who says, when are you releasing your first anime? Well, I'm glad you asked. I don't know yet. Unfortunately, anime is extraordinarily expensive, but I can tell you that we're taking our first real step. So first of all, we already have two Webtoon projects. So Webtoon being sort of the uh, tester phase to make sure that it would make for a good anime. We've launched two so far and both of those, so 100%, 
of the Webtoons that we have launched have spent their entire life cycle in the top 10 of their category. So I'm very proud of that stat. Um, I think they're amazing. One is called Neon Future. The other one is called Hexagon. I highly encourage you guys to check them both out. Um, and then the second thing that we're doing to really um, bring amazing content to the anime community is we're launching an NFT marketplace, hopefully in mid-August. That's where we're aimed at right now. It's going to be fucking amazing. We are killing ourselves to get the technology right. Uh, we're working with a ton of ridiculously talented artists. And uh, if anybody out there is in the NFT space, is into anime, is into manga, uh, hit me up. First of all, we are always looking for writers, writers, writers. And if you are ungodly talented at writing or drawing in a manga anime style specifically, we are always hiring. So hit your boy up and keep your eyes peeled for that marketplace. We're going hard. All right. I'm going to go to the middle of the pack here since I don't know if the new ones are new or old. How do you build discipline? Radumaran. Radumaran or Rad Umaran. I'm not sure which, but thank you for the question. So how do you build discipline? All right, so discipline really is a function of desire. So if you want to build discipline into your life, there are certainly mechanistic things you can do, habits and things like that. But the reality is when you lack discipline, when you lack drive, what you're really lacking is desire. And that's why so many people have to hit rock bottom and then they say never again. So for me, it was the shame of feeling like, hey, I just promised my father-in-law that one day I was gonna make his daughter wealthy and here I am laying in bed for five hours a day. Those two things are not congruent. I need to start holding myself accountable to things I respect. So going back to that idea of if you want to earn self-respect, you have to do things that you respect. So you've got to do things you think are fucking rad. There's just no two ways about it. So um, for me, that shame of being like, damn, I just told my father-in-law that, hey, I know you see a broke, out-of-work kid, but I'm telling you I'm the most ambitious person you've ever met. And then I'm laying in bed. And I'm like, man, that made me realize there's a difference between ambition and drive. And I had ambition, but I did not have drive. And so to get the discipline, I had to really feel badly about who I was. And I realized I did not want to feel badly like that anymore. Now, if only I had realized that that was a function of desire and that desire is a process, meaning that you can get better at it. You can do a thing that allows you to increase that desire. And that goes like this. If you're taking notes, jot this down. Step number one, what is the thing that you are going to desire? going to desire, not that you already desire. It should be an area of interest. You wanna make sure it's something real, so don't try to make yourself desire something that you really don't give a shit about. But take something that you're interested in, and you're gonna say, okay, cool, I'm gonna get really passionate about this thing. Then you're gonna tell yourself and other people, hey, this thing, I'm way into this thing, and I'm gonna get great at this thing. Now, as you tell them, you want to embody the excitement that you wanna feel. There's this weird mechanism physics of being human, where your brain will justify the amplitude that you display, whether it's real or not. If you suddenly turn on the hype juice and say, yo, I'm really into this thing. You have no idea. This is going to be amazing. I'm all in on this. Your brain goes, whoa, we keep saying this and we keep saying it at a heightened level. So maybe this is really something that we're into. I guess we really feel passionately about this. And then the next time you say it, you're actually going to feel a bit more of that. And so the more you tell other people, the more you're gonna to start to feel that thing. Now that'll get you to fascination, but it's not actually gonna get you to passion. So now you've got this fascination, you feel a bit of juice when you tell people that you're into it, you engage with it. As you engage with it, you're gonna realize, whoa, I, I'm actually getting better at this thing, physics of being human again. The more energy you put into something, the better you get at that thing. So now, putting energy into this thing that gives you more energy than it takes. So the more you engage with it, the more you like it, the more you engage with it, the better you get, the better you get, the more you like it. You're telling people that you're hype on it. You're embodying the enthusiasm. You're actually getting better at it. Now, it really is gonna spill into a passion. Then you leverage it to help other people as well. So now you poured all this energy into actually getting good at something and you get into a reciprocal relationship with that thing. And the reciprocal relationship is I do it and I feel good just in the doing because it energizes me. And now I'm helping other people with it. And they're giving me positive feedback. They're saying, yo, you changed my life. You helped me, whatever. It can be, you helped me be a better gamer, which will feel awesome. It can be, you changed my life by helping me think differently about myself or have a better relationship with my parents or get better grades in school, whatever. 
You're going to help people in some way that matters to you and matters to them. And now when you get into that reciprocal relationship, now you've got real passion for that thing. And because you love it, now you're going to be a disciplined motherfucker. But the reality is you had to tackle it from the, this shit is now fun perspective. I want this shit perspective. And if you don't want it, you will never have the discipline to see it through. So my friends, I beg of you, start with desire. Facts. Facts. Those are facts. All right. Everybody, at this point, I suppose I should sign off. I had but a few spare moments. Um, because someone's asking about my wife, which is my Achilles heel, I will answer that and then I have to go. Um, how did you meet your wife? And how did I know she was the one? All right. I met my wife in a way that I would get canceled for today. She was my student. I was teaching filmmaking and it was a school for adults. I do feel compelled to mention that. Uh, and she was amazing, but she was just some girl at that point, to be completely honest. And I was excited because she was legally obligated to leave the country. So I thought, this is amazing. Uh, have a summer fling with this hot chick and then she will bounce. She has to. And so all will be well. And so she was thinking, oh, I get to have a fling with my teacher. This will be a good story to tell my grandkids. And then I have to leave. So this guy, even if he fell for me, it wouldn't matter. I'm going to leave. And because neither of us had fear of loss, we were completely honest with each other, aggressively so. And that set us up in all the right conceivable ways to have a real relationship. And so then she left, but I was completely smitten, though I was not in love. I went to visit her in England after she had left the US. And I realized on my way home from that trip that shit, now I am in love with this girl and she lives halfway around the world. This is not ideal. Um, and we worked really hard to make the relationship work. And it was... I was very thoughtful about whether or not I was going to propose. And in that, to answer whether how I knew she was the one, at the time I met her, I did not plan to get married. It, uh, relationships did not seem to be worth the amount of compromise that they require. And then I met her and realized, whoa, I'm prepared to, to make a lot of compromises for this woman. And... I really thought because she used to get sick a lot and this of course was all microbiome, but we didn't know that at the time and she got sick a lot and I don't like being a caretaker. So I was like, Ooh, God, do I really want to marry this woman and have to deal with that? And I realized, man, I'm either never getting married or I'm marrying this woman. And so I'm open. So me, which is it going to be never getting married or marrying her? And I decided that I was going to marry her because nothing in my life had ever brought me that level of joy. Uh, and so I thought long and hard about the proposal, decided I was going to propose. And then once I proposed, there was no looking back. Now, here's what I told my wife. I'm not worried about whether you're the one. I don't think there's any such thing as the one. I think there's only, there is so much joy in this relationship that I'm willing to work to make sure that it stays high functioning that it remains the most rewarding thing in my life. And I want to share this life with you. And there will inevitably come along somebody who is um, more attractive, smarter, better at this, that, or the other. And I will find other people attractive and all of that, but I will never betray you because I'm committed to you. I want to share this life with you. I'm not trying to find some world-class, amazing gem that will never be replicated. I'm trying to find somebody that brings me joy and will build a life with me and share 
all of this existence and that I can grow with and grow together and all of that. And I expect the same of you. You know, you will find other men attractive and I don't ever need you to lie to me. In fact, it would make me uncomfortable. I wouldn't be able to trust you if you were like, I only have eyes for you, which we all know is bullshit. Um, But you being committed to me and you being committed to sharing this life, now that matters to me a lot. Uh, and so we have done exactly that. And we've been together now for 20 years together. We've only been married 19, 19 in a month. And, but that's a long fucking time. And I will just tell you right now, we got together when I was brokeity broke. And it was so funny when we finally became successful and people were like, yo, this bitch is gold digging. And I was like, homie, she was clipping coupons for years. So that woman is my half in everything. And when we created impact theory, when we, everything we've ever done, I told the lawyers, create the ultimate divorce nightmare, 50-50, not 51-49, 50-50, because that woman has earned her half. So that's it, boys and girls. Find somebody that you can share a life with and build something together with. That's the fucking joy. Don't constantly be looking under the next rock or around the next corner for the better model or whatever. It needs to be somebody that brings you more joy than anybody's ever brought you, okay? I'm not just saying fucking find anybody. 80% of this battle is selection. But the 80% is fucking mindset. Are they gonna grow? Are they gonna get better every day? Are they gonna be open to change? That's what you wanna get down with. All right, you guys are amazing. Thank you. We talked mindset, business, relationships, all of it. You guys rock with me through all of it. Respect. Go right now to YouTube and sign up for Relationship Theory. It is Lisa and I's most underappreciated content because people don't know about it. But that shit is fucking fire. We drop bombs constantly. I'm telling you, 20, over 20 years together, 19 married, built multiple businesses, went from broke to wealthy. There are techniques to this shit and we've got it all. All right, guys, I really gotta go this time. Peace, thank you, you guys are amazing.